Welcome to season four of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we discuss business agility through customer experience, employee experience, and digital transformation. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom. The Agile World Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed on this show, you can go to my website at gregkillstrom.com and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, Meaningful Measurement of the Customer Experience, now available on Amazon and other retailers. My name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm the host of the Agile Brand Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about high-performance teams, the business value they create, and how to create these teams. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome John Estefanos, founder and CEO of RallyBright. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this topic with you. Uh, so why don't, we, why don't we start by you giving a little background on yourself as well as uh, why you started RallyBright. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, so I started RallyBright because throughout my career, um, the thing I'm most proud of is building great teams and the success that they accomplished while we were working together and then also the legacy that they've created uh, the team members have created by going off on their own and also doing great things. So um, in terms of a little bit of a background around me, many, many years ago, I made the mistake of going to law school. Um, <laughs> absolutely did not like anything about that. So I started my first company. Um, and throughout the course of building that company over six years, I you know, built what I felt was like an amazing team. We were very close, highly accomplished, and together we decided to sell that company. Um, and then I went on to a larger organization, and this was in the marketing agency world and the software world. Um, and all of a sudden, I was handed a team with 45 people in my group uh, across seven different offices in the North America with a 37% attrition rate. Wow. And the goal there was, hey, John, help us fix this. And I did what I thought was right. And I got on a plane and I met people and we built an amazing team there, too, and got that attrition rate down to single digits. Um, and throughout the, my career, that just that that model kept kind of repeating. Um, and my next gig was working at a global marketing agency um, with, with teams all over the world. And the one pain that I always felt was I always felt like I understood what was happening with my direct reports, whether they were, you know, you know, direct line or dotted line. Um, but what, what's really hard for an executive to get a, a, a pulse on is what's happening on the ground with the entire operating unit, the entire team. So we believe teams are core operating units for organizations. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get that insight in a normalized, quantified way, to me would have been amazing because I'm a data junkie. I like process. Mm -hmm. um, so the thought was, if I could build something that helps me understand how teams are operating, regardless of geography, regardless of my relationship with individual leaders um, in a normalized way, um, that could provide value to others. No, oh, that's, that's that's great. Well, you know, so we're here to talk about uh, this concept of, of high performance teams. So why don't you uh, first define that for us just so we're, we have this, the vocabulary. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and to be clear, um, you know, everything that we do at RallyBraid is based on academic research as well as in practice research developed by, you know, PhD level behavioral scientists, organizational development psychologists, what have you. So, so in terms of a high performing team, uh, we use resilience as one of the key barometers for what drives a high performance team. So when we think of resilience, we think about um, being able to engage with adversity to sustain performance through adversity and as you overcome obstacles, to rebound from setbacks and then to learn and grow from the experience. So that's how we would define a high performing team is it's a team that's able to uh, stay together, stay on mission, stay on target and um, work through any of the challenge that are, challenges that are presented to them and not only work through them, but thrive through them to some degree and ultimately uh, learn and grow from those experiences. And when you have teams that do that, um, it's something really special. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you touched on this a little bit um, as you were talking about your background, but how do you how do you recommend building a high performing team? Like what are, what, what are the steps that are that, that it takes? Yeah, it, it's always going to be an organic process, right? Because one of the things that we found both in practice and through data is that just putting together high performers 
does not make it a high performing team. Yeah. So there, there are models that you can look at. There are behaviors that you want to reinforce to actually develop that, that high performing team in an organic way. Uh, first and foremost, what we've seen is um, we call this the dimension direction is defining and enforcing and, and, and reinforcing a shared vision and purpose behind the team. So, so understanding that you with this group of professionals that you rely on every day to achieve a common purpose is have clarity around that purpose. So that's, that's one of the core, core tenets behind building a, a high performing team. Um, there are also some engagement components that you want to look at. So we, we have two dimensions that we measure focused on team engagement. So uh, one is connection. That is, do you have psychological trust and safety amongst your team members? So you need to create an environment where people can show up as their authentic selves. Um, they can make mistakes. They're not going to be punished for it. Um, and that you're actually going to you know, learn from those mistakes, which, which leans into the second core dimension around engagement, which is attitude. Do you have a growth mindset? Can you, can you foster a growth mindset on the team? Are we willing to, to learn and grow from all that we're doing? And are we willing to look at things with an open mind? Um, and then on top of that, you want to drive things like shared optimism and a competitive spirit on the team. So th those are some of the founding you know, principles that we found have, have led to development of high performance teams. And then going a little bit deeper, you know, there are two other components. One is really around um, how do you measure performance, not necessarily from your kind of business metrics, whether that's a CRM or your, your financials, but really around as a team, are we performing in an optimal way? Do we have shared accountability and commitment to one another? Do we have a bias for action? Are we doing the things we say we're going to do? And being able to measure that and hold one another accountable for that is also really, really important. Um, in terms of looking at existing team members uh, when creating this, this high performance team and culture. Cause you know, a lot of times you, you inherit a team, you know, you mentioned anecdotally, you know, you inherited a team and oh, yeah. um, I'm sure some of those were just the perfect fits for the team. Others, uh, you know, may not have been, you know, what, what are criteria that help you understand if an existing team member can really make the cut to, to this high performance team? Yeah. I mean, I think what we're, we're, we're talking about is like, are there behaviors that individuals are exhibiting that maybe aren't contributing or optimizing the overall team performance? Yeah. And um, I, I think it's always interesting. Um, and, and just for, for clarity, we, we measure only at the team level. So we really try to look at teams as these cohesive units. But of course, teams are made up of individuals, right? So, um, you know, just recently over the summer um, of 2021, we ran a study um, across North America to look at how inclusion and belonging drive team performance. So I think when you start looking at teams and how individuals contribute to teams, one of the things you always want to think about is, are we fostering an environment of inclusion and collaboration? And are we driving things like psychological safety and belonging? And when we have environments where that's not necessarily the case, um, I think that's where we begin to see some of those um, some of those effects on the overall team performance. So one of the things that we always consider when, when we're looking at kind of building these high performing teams is, is the environment inclusive? And are we giving everybody a fair shake? And if we're not, we have to look at the behaviors that are contributing to that. Um, but we, we normally would say you want to look at that at the team level versus the individual level. How do you relate high performing teams with business value? Uh, you know, what, is, what are some of the ways that you've done this and, and what kind of value can these teams um, create that underperforming ones just simply don't? Yeah, we've seen some incredible results working with some great organizations and some phenomenal teams. So, um, you know, at the executive level, when, when we see teams that are high performing, um, they're driving that shared vision, that shared purpose. They're, they're, they're pushing that optimism with an organization. Um, and e e on top of that, when they're aligned with the organizational values or they're creating those organizational values, we've seen companies thriving. That's either through kind of top line growth uh, revenue wise. Um, one of the key indicators that we always look at is if you are driving these inclusive teams and you are giving everybody a seat at the table, how is that affecting attrition? So um, voluntary turnover is something that we look at. Um, are people leaving? Um, and we found, for example, that um, by increasing 
the inclusion that people are 10 times less likely to leave within an organization. So that, that's one of the core metrics that we look at. Um, but in other cases, we've worked with, you know, individual contributors becoming team leaders and helping them, you know, identify their clarity. And in that case, if it's a group of engineers, it's, are we delivering better code faster with less errors and higher customer satisfaction? So we, we look at that anecdotal business evidence coming out of teams that are high performing and what we've seen as a direct correlation um, in terms of the high performing teams delivering better results. What about leadership's role in, in doing this? You know, what's um, obviously it, it takes commitment and, and focus at the team level, but what is leadership's role in, in not only creating, but sustaining these, these high performing teams? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, number one, I would say is openness, right? Like we, we, we get questioned a lot. Um, what if people don't want to see what the results actually are? What if we don't want to see where where our problems are, or what behaviors we should be focusing on? Because we feel like it's going to be too much work for us to take action on that. Um, obviously, that might not be you know a good indicator of a, of a high performing team if if, if, if right, they're right. open, right? Um, so, so so generally, first and foremost, it's 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 that openness and transparency, um, being able to really kind of take a step back and say we have real interest in understanding on how to improve. So it's that commitment, right? It's that commitment, just like we talked about around the teams, also around the individuals. Are we willing to engage with adversity or challenges? Yeah. Um, if we are engaging in, with those, can we sustain our performance through them? And can we actually come back stronger and, and, and having learned something? So when you have a leader who's, who's willing to engage, they're willing to work through what they need to with the collective voice of the team and the team feels empowered. And that's definitely driven by leadership. The, the, the behaviors that drive openness and authenticity and psychological safety, those are all modeled after what a leader supports, encourages, and actually presents on their own. Yeah. Yeah. So that th those are the big things that we've seen. Yeah. And as far as measurement, you, I know you touched on the sum already, but you know, what, what are some of the ways that you measure performance and that you can tell how your team is performing? I would say, you know, both more immediately as well as over time. Yeah. So um, it, it's a great question. And, and one of the things I always struggled with, and I, I think a lot of leaders struggle with is um I kind of get it from a soft kind of, you know, the, the soft skills are important and I understand how to implement those. And, you know, I like to say we, we, we help measure some of the soft skills. So, so how do you measure those? Uh, you look at the behaviors, you look at how the behaviors are manifested as a group. You look at how individuals um, identify against specific behaviors or characteristics that are present on a team. Um, and you basically survey and score them. And by scoring them, you're able to get an understanding of which behaviors do we as a team, as a collective, feel like we're strong at um, or the characteristics of the team. So we may be strong on psychological safety and trust, but may, we may be weak on, you know, performance, which is that accountability to one another and that bias for action. So, so by being able to um, have a model or a rubric by which you can measure these things in a quantifiable way based on how people present against specific characteristics, that's step one. Um, when you look at measuring over time or how do you sustain that over time, um, you know, everything that we do, at least at Rally Bright, is we, we look at things from a longitudinal basis. So, um, you know, it's a lot easier to understand what's happening when you're looking at a trend or a line versus when you're looking at a single point in time. Yeah. So that's what we encourage people to do. That's what this, our software allows people to do. And that's, that's essentially how, as a leader, you can see how are we progressing and where are we progressing um, in, in, you know, multiple ways. So, uh, you know, with so much talk about uh, the great resignation, you know, there's other names floating around as well, but that, that seems to be a common one. Um, do you think uh, building a high performing team can help mitigate some of the, some of the, some of the, um, things that cause it, you know, so burnout, lack of motivation, other aspects is, is a, is that team dynamic and a high performing team dynamic, um, you know, part of, part of the solution, I guess. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and actually, um, you know, 
we, in, in terms of where we were as an organization two years ago, we were really focused on performance and dynamics. Um, so, so really, you know, the, the, the performance attributes of how a team delivers business impact and then also how people work together. Um, the great resignation has changed everything and, um, or the great reshuffle or whatever else it's right. called, right? <laughs> um, we, we knew early on, and I, I would say even prior to COVID, we started to um, work on how do we drive greater inclusion on teams and belonging and, and, and drive better collaboration amongst diverse teams. So we, we've actually shifted our branding a little bit and, and to, to say we, we help build high performing and inclusive teams because as I alluded to earlier, we, we ran a study over the summer based on work that we've been doing with, with many of our customers um, to really look at this concept of inclusion and belonging. So how do you mitigate against the great resignation? Um, we found that um, organizations and teams that have individuals with a high sense of inclusion, and we define inclusion as both psychological safety and belonging, their people are 10 times less likely to leave. So turnover intent is 10 times less likely in the top quartile of organizations um, in terms of inclusion. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. And I think that's uh, having worked a bit in this space and in, in, in some different ways, you know, it is interesting how their retention and uh, is still a challenge. It's just, it looks very different right now versus, you know, a couple of years ago. It, um, so that's, it's interesting that you were able to um, kind of use the same principles, but still, um, you know, still, still work in the, in the same area. Yeah, and I, I, I think it's absolutely relevant, right? Because as a leader, you want to make sure that everybody is feeling like they can contribute, that they're contributing, yeah. that they can connect to one another. Um, and what we've seen over the last two years has been a paradigm shift in terms of the workplace. Obviously, even prior to, to COVID, we were talking about remote work and hybrid teams. But what we've seen is, you know, now only a third of people want to return to the office. Burnout's at a 12 year high. Um, 40% yeah. of people are looking for new jobs. And um, there's a lot of purpose driven reshuffling, meaning if people don't align with the purpose and if they don't feel like they can contribute to a shared purpose within an organization, they're much less likely to stick around or come join you. Yeah. Well, and, and to the to the point about the, the remote and hybrid, what have, what have you seen in, uh, is it harder to get teams aligned? Is it, is it the same, you know, what, like, what, what have you seen from your, cause you have an interesting purview over this, uh, as far as team dynamics. So what, what's, what are the trends that you're seeing? Yeah. So, so we've seen three major trends. Um, number one, um, that, that, that connection on teams, that, that interpersonal relationship amongst team members specifically, um, that actually has gotten a lot stronger or it got a lot stronger at the beginning of the pandemic and maybe for the si first six to 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, and the hypothesis there, and you know, originally we were worried about that. We were like, oh my gosh, relationships are gonna deteriorate. But we found relationships within teams have actually gotten stronger or got stronger initially because people were more empathetic. We were all going through the same kind of work, yeah. school, life shuffle, right? Um, everybody from the CEO down to the, the, the frontline workers, were, we were all worried about what was happening. So um, that actually got stronger. And now we're actually seeing a bit of a barbell effect on you know things like psychological safety and um, communication, because there's a group of folks that have kind of gone through everything together on a team. And they're either people coming into the team that are taking some time to, to ramp up and get connected, or there are some people that are, you know, falling off a little bit through basically just COVID fatigue. Yeah. Um, so, so that's interesting. So we're encouraging leaders to, 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 to look at what was so great at the beginning in terms of those relationships and reinforce that, um, you know, take the, once again, learn and grow from the experience, rebounding and learning from adversity, um, how, how to continue to leverage that. So that, that was the first trend that we were um, really excited about. Uh, the second one is, um, we measure something called alignment or adaptability. And that is how do we as a team work with other groups within the organization? Mm -hmm. So as a sales team, how do we work with marketing as a legal team? How do we work with operations? And what we found is there's been a steady um, erosion amongst, you know, how teams work with other departments or other teams within the organization. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that is due to um, frayed connective tissue within organizations, right? Like you can't walk down the hall 
and ask somebody in legal to yeah. review a contract real quick or just a clause, right? Mm -hmm. you, 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 people aren't even really picking up the phone anymore because everything is a Zoom call and you've got to schedule it and you've got to find, you know? Yeah. Um, so so, so that's, that's the other thing. And then the third trend and the one that we're most optimistic about is we found that organizations and teams with that strong shared purpose that's aligned with their organizational values have actually been thriving through the disruption of the past two years. So, you know, from, from a business perspective, we're seeing like really strong growth. Um, we're seeing, we're seeing those lower attrition metrics from a startup perspective, the startups that we've worked with, um, and we work with everything from, you know, small startups to unicorns, to some of the biggest tech names in the world and industrials in the world. Um, but what we've seen is, you know, they're, they're raising more money and they're hitting their objectives a lot quicker. Nice. So values are important, especially yeah. when values incorporate things like inclusion and purpose and adaptability and those types of things. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Well, one last question before we wrap up. Um, sure. Yeah, do you have any recommendations for something the audience can read, watch, listen to, you know, just to get some more information and, and you know, about what we discussed today? Yeah, I mean, I there there are so many great resources out there. Um, you know, one of the things that 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 I like to look at on an almost daily basis is like the Harvard Business Review kind of updates, um, yeah. the MIT Sloan Business updates. Um, I think you know, ultimately, there, there, there's a lot of chatter out there around around what we can do here, and what I've found is. Um, you know, there are some of the standards, I think, you know, folks like Adam Grant provide great perspectives. Yeah. Um, he's out of University of Pennsylvania on, on the world of work and how that's changing. So I, I like to follow his stuff. But but ultimately, look, I mean, one of the core things that that we've discovered or continue to kind of um, investigate as an organization and as a company is, the, the, the principles behind building great teams and supporting your people and driving great engagement, they're not super complex. So there are tons of flavors out there. Find the one that, that suits you the best or the, the voice that suits you the best. But the principles aren't necessarily rocket science. And a lot of us feel like it's just common knowledge. It's putting it into practice, tracking it and reinforcing it. That's wonderful. Well, John, thanks so much for joining the show. Uh, for those listening, what's the best way for them to keep up with what you and Rallybright are doing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, please, you know, check out our website at rallybright.com, R-A-L-L-Y-B-R-I-G-H-T. Um, we're also um, on Twitter um, and you can follow me or connect with me personally. Um, I am just ODC on Twitter. Um, and always feel to reach out. Just hello at rallybright.com. We'd, we'd love to talk to you. Wonderful. Well, again, I'd like to thank John Estefanos, founder and CEO of Rally Bright, for joining the show. Thanks for listening to The Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom. Talk to you next week. Thanks again for listening to The Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www dot the agile brand dot show to get a copy of my latest book meaningful measurement of the customer experience visit my website at gregkillstrom.com until next week stay agile